The best on the planet playing at eight state-of-the-art stadiums. Superstars of the game and the future stars of the game. It's the biggest sporting event in the world and all eyes are on Qatar. Welcome to Football Now from Doha. My name is Samashu. We are officially in a World Cup year, so we thought it was the perfect time to preview this year's tournament. We'll hear from some of the biggest names in the game, including previous winners and the FIFA president Gianni Infantino. But before we do, here's some of the key things to know about Qatar 2022. The country will make history when it hosts the tournament later this year, as it'll be the first ever Middle Eastern World Cup. So the key dates in the diary are the 21st of November all the way through to the 18th of December, making it the first ever Winter World Cup. The history making continues too with eight stunning stadiums, all within a 75 kilometre radius. It'll be the most compact World Cup yet, meaning no domestic flights for fans and players alike. All that means that Qatar 2022 is all set to be the first ever carbon neutral World Cup. Now, with a Football Now exclusive, I spoke to the FIFA president Gianni Infantino and asked him whether he thought this might just be the best World Cup yet. It's official one year to go until the World Cup. Do you think this will be the best World Cup ever? And if so, why? Yeah, definitely will be the best World Cup ever. Uh, and uh, more than that, it will be a unique World Cup uh, for, for many reasons. Our stadiums are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They are ready. The country is getting ready. And to have such a compact World Cup, we'll never have this again. All the fans from all over the world will come here to Qatar will be all together, not only the fans of two teams in a city, the fans of 32 teams in one country, all together to celebrate football, to celebrate humanity. I mean, it's fantastic. Confident words from the FIFA president then. Let's now look at some of the competition's biggest ever moments. And we'll start with Senegal at the Korea-Japan 2002 World Cup, the country's first ever tournament, and up against the best team on the planet, France. When Papa Bouba Diop scored the one and only goal, the dancing scenes that followed around the corner flag would go down in footballing history. From the sublime to the ridiculous, Zinedine Zidane, who was probably the best player of the 2006 tournament in Germany, until he did this. That extra time headbutt on Italy's Marco Materazzi saw Zizou see red in his last ever game. Diego Maradona's brace against England in 1986 is, without a doubt, the most famous ever. His first, the hand of God. The clear and obvious handball to everyone but the referee. As saw the little Argentine loop the ball over Peter Shilton. Just four minutes later though, the goal of the century. A 60 metre run past four England players and then a delightful dummy that left Shilton on the floor. Now, with less than a year to go until Qatar kicks off, the excitement here in the country's capital, Doha, is clearly building. We spoke to a number of former players with World Cup experiences and, unsurprisingly, they're very much looking forward to this year's tournament. I'm very happy, very excited and impatient to live this moment after a year of the best uh, competition. I think it's exciting for the country because you see now the stadiums are all finished, the infrastructure, the city's changing every day. For the fans, there's so much to do. Embrace the culture, museums, the desert, beautiful restaurants, hotels, beaches. So there's so much. The Mundial here in Qatar will be completely different. It will be a Mundial where you will have the opportunity to see four games in one day. Finally, who do you think will win the tournament and why? Brazil. Porque é o Brazil. Now, despite being a small country of over just two million people, Qatar has built a brand new Doha Metro line. This connects each World Cup venue. In fact, it's estimated to carry over one million passengers during the tournament. Each stadium is air conditioned too, so fans and players alike won't have to worry about the heat. So let's have a look at some of them. We'll start with the biggest. The Lucelle Iconic is based in a new city that was only completed in 2019. The stadium will play host to the World Cup final. Next to the Al Bayt, it's already played its part in history, hosting Qatar's biggest ever football match in the Arab Cup last year. 
Its traditional tent-like design not only looks spectacular, but it also complements the stadium's cooling technologies. 70 kilometers south is the Al Janoub Stadium, which is based on a traditional Dow boat. The arena will be transformed into a sport and entertainment hub following the conclusion of the World Cup. Situated close to the desert, Ahmad bin Ali epitomizes everything about its location, including the sand dune-shaped structures around the stadium. The Khalifa International Stadium was one of the few pre-existing arenas in Qatar. It reopened in 2017 with a modern design, including brand new arches. Surrounded by pitches and courts, this is largely seen as Doha's central sporting hub. Education City is not just a stadium, it's an area of universities and research labs. The arena's translucent design and spectacular lighting means it really comes to life at night. Stadium 974 was given the name for two reasons. Firstly, it's the country's international dialing code, and secondly, because 974 shipping containers were used to help build it. This itself makes it fully demountable once the World Cup is finished. And finally, the Al Tumama Stadium, based on a traditional gaffia hat. The arena played host to the 2021 Amir Cup final between Al Sadd and Al Rayyan in front of a capacity crowd. So that brings us to the end of our World Cup 2022 preview show. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two about this year's tournament in Qatar. Let us know who you think will win the competition using the hashtag FootballNowWorldCup and we'll see you next time for more Football Now.